I'm gonna. I want to talk uh, about hybrid meetings, the the unicorn that everybody talks about, and 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 I think Denise, you've you've, you've spotted one actually. I think you participated well, to it. Well, uh, yes. So one I knew about, and one I didn't know about. So nothing worse when you come to a meeting and all of a sudden you didn't realize it was a hybrid meeting. Uh, disastrous. Uh, so when you're, if you want to do a hybrid meeting, first of all, it's going to be more expensive than just doing a virtual meeting because now you really have a virtual meeting and then you have an in-person meeting and the trick to making these work really well and one that i saw was really well done it was at a hall um, they had top of the line av equipment so you got to go to the expense of setting it up and really what works is if you have one person at the in-person meeting with the one computer, everybody else should be virtual, except people, owners that may want to attend the meeting. And if owners attend the meeting, you need to have a good microphone system. But it's really important that you do not have, like the disastrous one that I saw, five people sitting in one room with one computer, um, or the ones that try to bring in their computers, the sound was terrible, People couldn't see hand raises. Those that were in front of the computer, the five different people were raising their hands, making motions. So you really have to be very organized and think about going to the expense of having a hybrid meeting. Right. Um, uh, Catherine, uh, have you sort of had to deal with hybrid meetings? Or I think yesterday we were talking about how uh, there's a risk of really having two meetings in parallels and, and uh, really getting sort of two disappointed crowds, both thinking that the other one's getting uh, a, a better shake out of the deal. And I think yeah. that's the reality of what's going to happen, right? As, as Denise had mentioned, you won't be able to see hand raises. You won't be able to hear conversations appropriately. There'll be a bit of a battle. Folks who can't see the people in the room who are waiting to answer questions or ask questions and the folks who are online trying to ask or answer questions. Um, some of the chat uh, discussions have already voiced the fact that for the very few people who truly cannot attend uh, a Zoom meeting or a virtual meeting uh, AGM wise, they can connect by telephone and participate using a paper proxy. Perhaps they can team up with another owner or resident so that they can share a little bit of screen time and, and participate that way as well. The benefit of having everybody in the same virtual room is the fact that you can demonstrate transparently that you are attending to a meeting. Um, and elsewise, I think you, you end up with a polarization where you have two groups who are sharing the condominium and not sharing the meeting of important information. Right, right, right. Okay, we're running out of time here. Very quickly, a third kind of meeting, and I'm just going to mention it, is our proxy meetings. And I know that for a while in last spring, there was some discussion about can you have a purely solely proxy meeting? Uh, and I think now um, what's accepted is that if you have a non-contentious meeting with a one ticket item, if, if all we're going to do is vote on the electronic bylaw, for instance, why not do it by, by proxy meeting where you're, you're sending the notices, but you're not going to be bothered with, with a, a room or a virtual room. This is a question we have for you folks. This is the bylaw to vote on. Yes or no, do you want to vote this way or that way? And the CAO uh, guide that came out about 10 days ago actually specifically addresses that and says, well, that, that, that may be actually actually a way of, uh, of addressing simple one ticket items kind of thing. Um, let me just see here. So we Sorry, oh, Rock, can I yeah. just mention something about that proxy? Um, think about nominations from the floor. I think that's why you don't want to do a proxy only meeting. For an AGM. For an AGM. Right. right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think you want to keep proxy meetings for the one ticket item that's non-contentious. As I said, I think the best example for that is if you're going to adopt a, uh, a, a virtual um, meeting bylaw. That's there's the question. Here's the question, folks. Vote on it. Send us your proxies. And, and that's it. We actually do it online. We have an online proxy for that sole purpose. If and So people just go and they fill in their proxy, they press submit and then that's it. It's, I think it's a quick and easy way to get to the finish line.